Welcome to VPO webinar brought to you by Digital Ship with today's topic, how to take vessel performance management to a new level. I'm your host, Vaida, from Conference Production, and here with me is Carl Jeffrey, founding editor of Digital Ship. Our guest speakers bring a great case study for you today. It's a project of vessel performance management that actually proved the return on investment. Uh, you will hear the details directly from them very soon. So let me introduce you to our speakers. Haraldur Ori Bjornsson, Director of Service at Marorca. Hello. Serena Lim, uh, Chief Scientific Officer of Ascens, and Karsten Manike, General Manager and Head of Marine Projects at Ultraship. Marorca and Ascens are part of GTT Group, who are also sponsoring this webinar. And probably you already know that an important part of the webinar is asking questions and getting direct answers from the speakers. You can do that very easily by typing all your questions to the Q&A box below your screen, and we will devote about 20 minutes uh, to go through them towards the end. And now I'm inviting Carl Jeffrey to share some opening insights into the subject. Let's get started. Okay, thank you, Vida. So what we mean, uh, we've got the theme taking vessel performance to a new level. So what we're getting at, so some people have the view that you just see the ship like a big power station and you just want to know what you're getting out of the main engine and what you're putting into it. But increasingly shipping companies want to know much more than that. So a much granular, richer view of what's happening. So some examples, there's companies have got scrubbers installed and they want to know how efficiently they're using them. We've got companies who are generating heat on board from the main engine with an economizer and they've got a boiler to give a backup power when the when they can't do that, but they want to know how much they're using the boiler. So they want to be warned if it's been consuming fuel for more than four hours. We've got operators of gas ships who want to monitor the sloshing of cargo in the tanks and the amount of boil off gas. There's uh, work boat operators, so they've got very different uses of fuel. So they might be changing quickly from being in standby to be in operations, or they're doing tugboat operations where you've got very, very variable demands on the engine because of what you're pulling. Some companies want a much more granular understanding of the bunker data so they can spot fraud. Sometimes companies decide the specific things they want to know so they can make a decision about when they're going to dry dock or whether they're going to renew a coating. Some companies want to do other things for their customers asking for, so they're defining new KPIs and they want to work out different ways to put dashboards together so they can gather data to, to, to see where they are with those. So, what we're going to hear from today, we've got two sister companies, it's Marorca and Ascens, they're both subsidiaries of GTT, and they're going to talk about how they do this for their clients. And we've got a case study about how they implemented a system for the ultra gas group of Denmark, which installed it on seven LPG carriers. So we've got three speakers. First of all, Harald Ori Bjornsson, who's a director of service from Marorca, joining us from Reykjavik. And then we have Srina Lim, who's the Chief Scientific Officer of Ascens. She's from Malaysia, but she's joining us from Newcastle. And finally, Karsten Manika, who's the Vice President and Head of, and Head of Marine Projects for Ultraship Group, which is the ship manager for Ultragas. He's not going to make a presentation himself, but he'll be available to answer your questions. They've got 21 vessels, which is 18 gas and three bulkers in their group. So I'd like to invite Harold to give the opening talk. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Carl. I'm uh, figuring out how to share my screen here. Do we see the presentation now? Or yes. It's the right window. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, so good day to you all, and uh, thank you for attending our webinar on performance management. So I'm briefly going to elaborate on a, a project we regard as very successful. Uh, a project we've been working on with uh, Ultraship, or our customer, for a few years. My uh, colleague Serena will discuss uh, smart shipping technology and uh, various things related to that. And I'm looking forward to good discussions in the end. So a quick word on GTT Digital and what we are and our activities. So GTT Digital comprises Marorca 
Besides present, uh, ASENS, OSC Engineering, and uh, Naturally Digital Activities within GTT. So, and the overall experience within the group spans over 30 years. Systems deployed on over 1,100 vessels globally. Uh, we are located in uh, 20 countries, four continents, close to all major shipping routes and uh, shipping hubs, which enables uh, exceptional customer service and support. But enough about us. Uh, so we're going to discuss uh, this project I mentioned we've been working on with uh, our customer Ultraship. So between 2014 and 2017, uh, Ultraship took delivery of seven new LPG carriers built in South Korea. Uh, all of the vessels were equipped with uh, Morocco systems and the extent of and the Morocco system, of course, doing the data collection on board. The extent of the data collection uh, was practical, mostly related to cargo and propulsion. Uh, full set of high quality, high frequency operational data is available uh, uh, for the initial scope from uh, out of dock or uh, since the vessels were delivered. Uh, since then, the, uh, the data collection on board has been expanded to support new KPIs as the project has progressed. And the latest example of that is collection of data from scrubbers, uh, which enables our customers to, for example, demonstrate compliance towards authorities and, of course, analyze uh, the operation uh, in more detail. Uh, so uh, what we as a provider have been emphasizing uh, in the last few years is a practical approach to vessel performance management without all, all bus and uh, all the fancy words, just practical approach. Uh, and we find this project is a great example of how uh, such approach and that kind of approach can be and is. So the initial scope and approach of Ultraship was as expected related to speed and consumption. Uh, shaft power meters and mass flow, flow meters installed on the vessels connected to the Morocco system and that enabled the technical team to at Ultraship uh, to keep close eye on speed and consumption, uh, build up-to-date fuel tables, monitor the hull condition, while the operations department uh, used the application to control the speed and consumption of the vessels with an application called Voyage Targets. So the, the application uh, which we developed to extend uh, together with our customer enables the operators to send instruction uh, through the systems to the vessel on speed and consumption limits, uh, monitor the progress in real time as they have access to uh, real time uh, dashboards. And uh, when the market is good, uh, high speed, uh, when not as great, uh, low consumption limit and uh, continuous monitoring and follow up and, uh, and uh, a feedback loop, basically. Uh, so as the project has progressed uh, over those six, seven years, uh, new KPIs uh, were defined and added to the scope of the overall project. Uh, project expanded uh, as the customer naturally wants to get as much benefit from the installation and initial uh, investment as possible. So reports customized, uh, data collection uh, expanded all to uh, support the development of the project. But what is common between uh, the KPIs defined for this project is that they are actionable. You know, the operators and the crew can take action based on the information generated. Uh, resulting in improvement, uh, reduced uh, excess consumption, reduced waste, uh, what uh, basically what this is all about. But how do we work together? Uh, of course, Karsten uh, will elaborate a bit later on how Ultraship approaches this, and uh, my view is basically on uh, our relationship in, uh, in this project. And uh, how do we work together to ensure uh, maximum benefit uh, from the project? So Ultraship manages very well all the equipment on board, uh, all the sensors, uh, all the infrastructure needed to get the quality data for the analysis as the input greatly determines the quality of the output. And as mentioned before, the selected KPIs and focus points for the projects are actionable. 
So to ensure positive progress, uh, there is a clear process in place to identify opportunities for improvement, to analyze the opportunities and to track the development. Uh, so, uh, so a key component in this process uh, is of course Morocco on board where the crew has access to analytics and advice like the speed advice or the speed instructions uh, mentioned earlier. And then Morocco Online, where the operators have real-time access to data and analytics. But additionally, we have set up alert mechanisms, which uh, send uh, messages to the relevant stakeholders uh, when an opportunity for improvement is identified or something related to the KPIs is off. And those who receive the messages have access to customized dashboards uh, so they can log in, evaluate if action is required, uh, related to the alert received and then finally we uh, make reports periodically where we review and track the development related to the KPIs as this is all about improvement uh, it's impossible to improve if you cannot measure it's not only about the data but you also have to measure the, the progress of the overall project somehow so one simple example, uh, a very simple example, and a common occurrence in shipping, is the use of oil-fired boiler and the economizer. So uh, the target uh, use the economizer in ship assets, uh, as the oil-fired boiler should not be needed. Uh, if the oil-fired boiler is consuming fuel for a few hours in ship assets, uh, alert is sent to the operator, which can uh, directly assess a live uh, analytical report with more uh, details and decide if to act or not. This is not a very fancy example or a complex example uh, on performance management, but it has proven to uh, yield great benefit, not only for Ultraship, but for multiple other customers. This is a very common occurrence. Uh, in the industry and over long periods, uh, the access cost is high, uh, which means also the savings potential is great if addressed properly. Another example, of course, uh, on hull and propeller performance, uh, key KPI, access propulsion consumption accounts for the biggest portion of excess consumption in shipping and also excess emissions. So a very important KPI uh, indeed. Uh, same process uh, as for the boiler, alert when a limit is exceeded, customized dashboard for detailed anal analytics uh, for the operators, and covered in more detail in periodic reports. Uh, so, and it's worth mentioning in this context that uh, Ultraship is in a unique position. They are possessing high quality, high frequency data for all the seven sisters uh, since delivery. Uh, some for full docking cycle, uh, which of course helps greatly in decision making uh, related to the future, related to new coatings, related to hull maintenance, and uh, what to expect, uh, and how to manage uh, the vessel within a docking cycle, what to expect and, and how to handle handle this. And uh, those two example, uh, examples, in those two examples, we have the same process alert uh, analysis reports and of course online. Uh, we are, are working uh, in a similar way with the auxiliary engines, main engine SFOC and, and other KPIs. So uh, th this, uh, kind of, uh, this kind of mechanism can be set up around basically all, all at least uh, general performance KPIs. Uh, where are we? So again, the process live, analysis on clear KPIs. Uh, the, it is important that everyone understands the KPIs and of course the fact that they are actionable is of great help as the, as the intention is to improve. Alerts when the opportunity is detected and a key thing here uh, active follow-up plus of course the progress reports. And to summarize the uh, the overall project has, in our opinion, been very successful and is still developing in positive directions uh, with uh, improvement of current setup and uh, new opportunities are being detected periodically, which we have not discussed here. So the value of high frequency, high quality sensor data is undisputed. Uh, and 
yeah, as I said, still discovering new, new opportunities. Uh, what is also the key here is that to be successful in vessel performance management, uh, commit, uh, commitment is required from the customer. So the software solution will, will only help you or give, help you get information on what is happening. But to improve, you need to act and uh, act in time. Uh, otherwise, you are just looking at uh, lost opportunities to improve and lost fuel. So those uh, those components here mentioned have been uh, key in the success of this project. Uh, and uh, looking forward to discuss this further after Serena's uh, presentation. Wow, uh, thank, you. thank you very much. Well, I'd now like to welcome Serena Lim, who's the Chief Scientific Officer with ASEN. So, She's from Malaysia, but she's joining us from Newcastle. She's been working in Newcastle University doing research into vessel energy management for three years. And she's got a PhD in offshore engineering in numerical marine hydrodynamics, which is uh, maybe the only person in the world to have that PhD. I don't know, but uh, I'd like to welcome Serena. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. And um, thank you, Haraldu, for showing us some great working examples of vessel performance management. So I'm going to touch a bit on the smart technology which enable all this analytics and how it is used to stimulate sustainable shipping. So what do we mean when we are talking about smart technology? Today, we have things like smartphones, smart TV, smart meters that we use, and sometimes we might feel uncomfortable when we are without them. Um, it is all about the connectivity. It's about having information on one single platform and being able to monitor and function remotely. So similarly, in our maritime context, we call it smart technology because it gives us the great connectivity that we all want. And it allows us to have the real, well, near real-time information at our fingertips. It provides great interface for us to interact and most importantly, act upon. So what makes it smart is also the people working with the technology. So producing actionable analytics, you have seen that through different projects, more KPIs are developed that to best suit the industry and to best suit the operational needs. What makes it smart is also the active user being able to make good and timely decision based on the data. So all these bits add together adds to improve um, the vessel performance. And all this also contributes to the sustainable shipping. As we go through some of the examples later, you can see the solutions supporting the three pillars of sustainability, um, socially, economically, and also environmentally. So when it comes to effective vessel performance management, we are proud to present our one platform. So we are an end-to-end -end provider we are able to provide deep analytics from data to actionable insights. We have our own sensors, or we can connect to all sensors and systems on board the vessel itself. So these data are systematically timestamped on our robust data acquisition system, where data can be visualized on board the vessel itself to provide crew with better overview and also real-time advisory. Data are also transmitted securely to our cloud server for remote monitoring from shore and also to carry out online analytics. The platform is also capable of sending and receiving API so to promote greater integration within and between other systems. And besides the hull and propeller and machinery uses examples that we have just seen presented to us, there are many other out of the box modules that works well and also contributes to the sustainable um, shipping. So the great things about smart technology is the speed and the ability to have the information for us to act upon. And most of us in the industry are really busy. So this carefully developed and refined system allows us to carry out vessel performance management on the go. Solutions are available on board the vessel. It's accessible through the online web portal. So you can log on anywhere you are as long as you have internet connection. We have mobile application so that it's available to receive quick insights. Specific alerts can be set 
based on your, your own required benchmarks and also thresholds. And we also provide comprehensive deep analytics and long running great services through our experts. When we are talking about sustainability of the shipping industry, it involves the contribution of all types of vessel, not just one single type of vessel. The technology that we are using must be able to cope with the diversity of ship types and ship operations. And we know that each of these vessels are designed with their own specific targets and specific mission. So when the technicality of data acquisition is resolved, and we know that the data that we gather can be trusted, the same database can actually be used to benefit different stakeholders. So on our platform, we have owners, operators, and charterers using the same data set to generate different KPIs and analytics to suit their own business needs. Our approach to providing a comprehensive system with specific targets is through close collaboration with different expert groups and also our customers. So to ensure that it is operationally viable as well, which is very important in our industry. So I'll highlight in particular four expert groups um, here in the next few slides. So the first one is the vessel performance expert. Um, within the model, it gives us real time overview of the assets. It provides quick insights to shorten the response time needed. It gives fleet analytics to ensure performance, field management to improve accountability, we also have charter parking and voyage overview to analyze each completed voyage. And reports are produced to detail the performance of the voyage itself, to quantify the emissions and also the costs, and to gauge actually how efficient these voyages are. And within the vessel performance um, expert group, we also have interactive interface to carry out single vessel analytics and also an overall fleet comparison analytics. We have smart data that provides information for emission compliance, as well as smart reporting, just to compare the auto log and also the manually recorded data. I won't go through all these features here in detail because there's actually a lot to talk about. So as we said, um, and also because the analytics is different to different group of people, and it's really dependent on the stakeholders perspective, and also the vessel that you're operating. So some analytics here that you've seen will be more attractive than the others. But this is just a quick flavor. So do get in touch with us for much deeper discussion later on. And the next group of experts that we'll discuss is the LNG expert. Uh, providing a great set of modules that can, are applicable in the LNG market. So being part of GTT, we have great support of a large R&D team to actually refine and ensure that the digital solutions provided here are operationally viable and most importantly, contributes to sustainable shipping. So we have management, optimization, and prediction modules that are LNG specific. We look into detail the boil of gas and sloshing activities throughout the voyage. We also have safety measures like risk management modules, such as the rollover prevention. And also we have round the clock 24 seven emergency response services. So our data and analytics are also kept up to date with the industry. We've seen the new LNG field ships coming up. So we have also digital um, smart analytics to accommodate this new fleet of vessels. So when it comes to other types of vessel like OSVs, workboats and tugs, we are looking at very specific um, and very specialized vessels over here that requires a different set of eyes and analytics altogether. The activities of these vessels changes very fast. It's very dynamic. They move from standby to dynamic position, dynamic positioning to transiting between different platforms and to carry out different activities. So specially designed interface are available um, to cope with such vessels. 
where we can map the breakdown of individual engine consumption, the running hours, and also the vessel activity. So to enable quality analytics to be carried out. We also have our standalone EFMS, which is stands for the Electronic Fuel Monitoring System that is temper approved, which fits well with the requirements of such markets. And thanks to the long experience of Essence, we also deliver independent bunker monitoring system using the Corellis meter, which measures the mass flow during the bunker process. The interface allows real-time visualization and provides alerts during the bunker process. Within it, we have smart analytics that are used to quickly profile breakdown, the breakdown transfer so that we know what's going on inside the pipeline and throughout the transfer itself. And our bunker monitoring module can also be used for different types of fuel. And this system is fully sealed, so to promote system integrity throughout the transfer line. And just a quick sum up of the slides I've presented. So we have looked at the analytics on one platform to have reliable data at our fingertips. And such comprehensive system allows different stakeholders to benefit from the different analytics created from the same database. So you have one system, but many applications. So the analytics are carefully chosen to suit different vessel types when you come on board. So what, are, what we are discussing here is more than just monitoring vessel performance, it's actually the real management of it. Thank you. Well, well, thank you very much. That's great. So, um, th thirdly, I'd, I'd like to in invite, um, well, we introduce you all to Carsten Manika, who's the Vice President and Head of Marine Projects at Ultra Ship Group. So, um, and be before um, we, we invite Carsten to introduce himself, you see the, the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. There's already a few comments up there, but please uh, type any, any, any questions you have in there. So, I, I'd like to um, invite Carsten, if you want to give yourself a quick introduction. Cheers. Yes, good day to all. Um, I'm so-called owner representative here and the customer. And um, well, we are from Ultra Gas and Ultra Ship, and we are so lucky that we have uh, top management, the commercial, the operational, and the ship manager, uh, manager at, in the same building. So um, we are very close to each other. And um, if I um, just briefly uh, go back in time and five, six years. Um, it has been a long voyage, which has not ended yet. Um, uh, I will say, as an owner, uh, the hardware issue is really the, um, the, the minimum problem, I will say, the, at least. The big, big challenge here is to create the awareness to understand uh, your own business and what is uh, important for your business. What is the lowest hanging fruit giving meaning? Do not take back home 8,000 different data points. Take the ones which are um, important, but also have um, a fair respect to what, um, what kind of awareness you need to, to create amongst, not, not least the management. If you don't have the top management willing to play a role here, uh, you will definitely not be getting anywhere. So what we try to do is, is apart from technical um, well, I say technical focus on the auxiliary engines or the consumers of board. And um, then we have a, a, a deep focus on the end users and in the way uh, our customers, which is the cargo owner, or maybe even the customer of the customer, so to say. That that really in, in, in our business, which is the LPG business, is, um, is, is a big, big uh, challenge here to us. So I will say this take years. At last, sorry, Carl. At last, day, I will say um, we, we all know where, that we are running into IMO 2030, uh, where we have to present a vessel specific 40% uh, higher efficiency. Um, and then thereafter, we have the IMO 2050, but uh, especially 2030, you will need to um, present um, data for, for your con uh, consumption and all, all consumption and CO2 emissions. And, and that will be an annual um, exercise. 
uh, we still need to, to understand how it's going to be. But, the, but that will uh, definitely um, challenge the way we, we present data and we have to put a lot more, more focus on it. Um, so um, I hope there's uh, some questions from, from potential owners or customers out there and uh, let me hear. Thank yeah, you. Well, that sounds, sounds great. There's two very things I'm intrigued by. I don't know if you'd like to share any further thoughts. So, so one is um, any more you can tell us about your customers. You mentioned your customers are your customers. So that's gas buyers, I would imagine. I mean, people say that their mood is changing. I don't know if you can share some thoughts on how, how that's changing. And the other one is um, on how you actually make decisions from the data. So maybe, maybe we'll go for the customers first. Is, is it more more you can tell us? Like it's always, always secret talking about customers, but uh, the general mood. Yeah, no, 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 no problem. But um, you see, uh, the LPG business is most likely different to any other businesses. I mean, right. I, mean I don't think we have the same business around. Like container business is different. Bulk is different. They have charter parties. They have all kinds of, you know, chartered in ships and so on. Makes it complicated. But our business is um, it's partly contracts, but it's, it's all also, uh, you know, um, a day-to-day -day voyages. Um, so the challenge that we see is that we have to get past the uh, brokers, the cargo brokers. Um, we have to get beyond them and have a direct uh, talk to uh, the cargo owners, which could be uh, many different uh, sources, just in order to, you know, to cooperate on being more efficient, right? Uh, I mean, we can also always use the standard contracts um, that everyone knows in the market, but uh, we believe by uh, being auto locked that we can uh, narrow that in so be more you know precise on the real consumption of the ships uh, but that's that's a talk talk we need to have with the customer in order to share the gain from that yeah there's a question from nick lambert at the bottom about where's your, the benefit for your bottom line but if, if you're if the customers are actually asking for this and you're giving the customers what you want then that's your commercial benefit from yeah from that's this. that's I understand the question because if you have a contract, you, you, you might give it away, so to say, the benefit in order to be more competitive. And that, that's one of the awareness talks that we need to have the, with the end user. But as we have, I don't know, the share between the different voyages, but as we have our own voyages as well, we have the benefit from, from, from saving fuel simply and, and to arrive in time and, you know, to, you know, overview the auxiliaries, the main engine or whatever you have, anti-fouling and so on. And, and uh, well, an estimate was, I would say, um, over the past years, I, I think we see a, a saving of about, uh, let's say, 8 to 10% on the best performance, I would say, maybe more. But, but that's, that's definitely the kind of figures we have. But that, as, you, as you, the question was raised, I guess, on, on this, uh, you know, having a lot of hardware on board, paying a lot of money on that, and and then give the benefit away in contracts. That's also a kind of a challenge. And do the charters also have their own green targets, like the sea cargo charter and stuff? Is that we know we we know that, uh, but then again, we get we have to get past the bro uh, the brokers. So if oh, if, <laughs> if if the brokers are not getting the request <laughs> from, from cargo owners, right? Yeah. That that this is something we have to uh, look at. Then, then, then we have to get past the broker. But I think time will show that this this will be a you know an automatic requirement over time. Okay. And I would say you know it, you, it's not just plug and play here. It takes time to to install. It takes time to create the awareness on board and in the office and among the customers. So do be be prepared. Oh. <laughs> better, better start today than than tomorrow. I would say. Oh, that's another sort of general question for me that this link between monitoring and decision making because they're not the same thing but you have to make decisions with this data somehow and there's a massive amount of data available but it could almost be too difficult to use to make decisions or how, do you have any thoughts on how you what yeah actually... we for for the operators we mainly take the the, the three major uh, kpis which is uh, consumption speed and et and let's try to keep it simple um then of course we also have a, a trim overview that we, the operators also checking once in a while, and um, but it's it's you know it's it's data up to date. The next step will be to create a kind of a decision tool 
when it comes to to uh, future weather and, and routing and so on and that that is something we are working on um but but the decision is basically on on three kpis which is um consumption speed and eta it might be different for other businesses but it's, it's working for us then of course we have cargo cooling all that we use like energy for we have to use it in the right way and that's also something that we are overviewing Oh, wow, that's great. Well, if we go on to the uh, question board, so we've got five up votes for Juris Sillin's question. What baselines are you using for hull condition evaluation, the sea trial or historical? I think that's probably for you, isn't it? Yeah, I guess we, we can respond to that. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, so, yes, we use the sea trial, of course, as a reference, but uh, most importantly, we are collecting data and we are comparing the collected data to our benchmark. Uh, there are errors in the measurement systems and so on. And we, in general, uh, we find uh, using uh, baselines built on collected data or, or uh, comparing collected data to a model built on, uh, on collected data better than using the sea trial report. The sea trial reports are very limited. The speed range is limited. The, the draft conditions are, are tight. So there is big uncertainty related to to the sea trial information, but it's important as a reference. Okay, so we've got this question, four up votes from, oh, it's a different question at the top now. So uh, how is this, yeah, how is the system improving the vessel performance? I guess that's like my question before about the jump from monitoring to uh, <laughs> decision-making. Um, I guess you're making decisions about reducing speed or knowing what's going on. Do you want to? I, exactly, and I, I mean, this is one of the things uh, I, ma I mentioned uh, in my slides, you know, the, the system will give you information, you, you know, it will give you, help you to get information in time, information to act on, and it's your action, uh, actions that save, save uh, fuel and money. And specific actions, I'm slowing the ship down, I'm using the boiler in a different way, I guess it's kind of clear once you've got the information what that, what that is. Yeah, yeah, or different coatings, you that dock early, you know, all, yeah. No limits there. Okay, and just so to got... add upon your answer, Harold, do, uh, we also have advisory um, on board as well. So we recommend what is the best bit to go. We recommend with different recommendations. For example, what is the saturated vapor pressure to have? What is the heel to remain? So that's quite a lot of advisory, including trim as well, that you can follow. You can choose to follow or not to follow, but the advice is there. Wow. Well. Next, so, so Pushkar from Kulkarni, he's asking what happens if ships don't have an active internet connection? Do you want to, I guess they've always got some kind of data link, have they? Or? Yes, of course, we have, have ways to work around that. At least there has to be some connection, <laughs> but uh, no, no connection, no data. But uh, we, we uh, our system can, I can cope with very, very tight bandwidth and, and uh, low speed. So it is not a problem. Yes, and also for depending on the vessel types, we have a lot of tugs um, that are that have our system as well. So you can actually use 3G mobile signal to just send the data as long as you can pick up from different spots itself. Okay. So the next question I'd like to put to Carsten, you're on mute at the moment, but um, he's asking about the gold conflict between uh, charters and the owners. So the charters want to reduce fuel, and the owners want to keep the vessel on higher for long, as long as possible. How do you resolve? This is this a problem that comes up in your discussion. That, that's that's a one million dollar question, right? It's a good question. So <laughs> um, no, it takes time to build up this uh, cooperation with the owner, and um, I will say for for long long term charter, uh, we are not there yet. Uh, we still have to uh, discuss and debate this, but but um, here I think uh, the CO two and and the the CO2 emission over the next um, couple of years will help us in, in this discussion here. Um, but but it, it is a challenge. And uh, to a certain uh, stage, I believe that uh, the wording of these contracts have to be, be changed, which I, which I know people are working on. Uh, but, but the new, new player is, is definitely the CO2 emission. But it's, it is a challenge. I mean, it's one of the Captain Garshan's question, is this system seen as something for the owner or something for the charter, or is that an issue that doesn't really matter who's 
Who's, who you're no, developing I, I, to, to be honest, we, we, uh, we, we believe in transparency. So uh, we, we can give them access uh, if, they, if they want to. Um, but of course, we need to have a, a, an agreement with them how to deal with the difference um, uh, with the consumption and so on. Um, and, and that means that the, um, you know, uh, max speed, max consumption and all that and in um, below before five. And that, that's something you have to discuss and debate with them. Because there, there's a benefit uh, to 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 over operate the ships in, a, in an optimal way, and these guys have to understand, and we have to understand their world. Um, but it's it's still a part of the awareness uh, we, we we have to create. Oh, do, you, do you want to take Jeppa Jules' question? Would you prefer a performance-based contract? With your customers, I suppose it's not for you to say what contract your customers make. I guess it's it. Oh, that—that that is what we try to okay. to, to uh, reach to that point and make it transparent. Uh, because I mean, uh, we we uh, you know in in the end, as I said, CO two. Uh, one thing is money, but CO two is going to be uh, a new new game changer here over time, and uh, you know the twenty thirty rules as well is going to put uh, some. Uh, I would say challenges to the marine industry and um, and also the daily and the annual operation of the ships. We have to be more and more efficient uh, to 2030. But there's also a, a money issue. And uh, that's, of course, we are not there yet, but uh, definitely we can, we can be transparent. And uh, we, you know, propose that to the, the cargo owners and see where it brings us. Oh, very good. So, so the top question, Cavri, Captain Ravi Shukla, I think this might be for Heraldur. Can the charters use your bunkering, bunker mon monitoring module if you have vessels for one to two months voyage? So, do they get access to that, the charters? Well, uh, I mean, the, the customer owns the data and uh, I, that, of course, depends on who is the customer. Uh, and that is, it's the same, you know, like Karsten say, I mentioned, the Ultraship is open to sharing data uh, with their charters and their customers. And uh, this probably depends on where the owner is at or where the owner of the system, it might, of course, be the charters. Oh. So, yes, you're probably going to bunker a lot of fuel in two months. So it's at least worth exploring that opportunity. Yeah. The next one, I think, is for, for Serena, I think. So... Is it fair to call this a digital twin, would you say? I think digital twin are used very lightly. <laughs> so <laughs> so that, that's a wide scale of how do you define digital twin? So is it having the vessel out there, but not having the vessel at all, you can say. It. Uh, we, uh, for us, I think it's not quite there yet. Uh, at least it's not a complete twinning, but it's definitely digital mapping of the vessel to allow you great monitoring and transparency of the operation on board. Oh, very good. So Nick Lambert, who's, um, he's asking, he says, that's an impressive number. I think that was probably the number about the 10% savings that Carsten mentioned on the fuel. I think that's what he means, but he says, uh, can you comment on the emissions reduction and how is that making your clients more attractive in the market? Um, Carsten, you didn't actually, you said the brokers are in the way and the brokers are concentrating on their fees, I suppose, not the <laughs> CO2. Is that... Yeah, we're, we're still a part of, you know, commercial um, uh, markets and uh, we, we, we believe that um, we will be more competitive, but we, we want to be more than that. Uh, we, we, we want to share the benefit with the cargo owners in order to you know, uh, one thing is, is the cost, of course, but also in, in the future is the CO2 emission, right? If we could do, we, if we could do a better job there, I'm, I'm pretty sure the society around us will appreciate that. And uh, if that is not enough, then 2030 and the rules there will, will guide us. Uh, but we want to use this as a kind of opportunity for the cargo owners. But it, 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 it's really... Um, I will say the outer lock, just an example, the outer lock that we get today is, uh, is so precise that we can see even a small change in trim can, can, and can change the picture, the, uh, the fuel consumption, speed consumption. And, and we can follow that. So uh, we, we optimize just on the trim. And here we can save, you know, uh, in some cases for, the, for the, the ships that we have, trading in speed and the the business that we have, we can save uh, up to eight, nine, nine percent sometimes. But that will, of course, 
be lowered um, due to the awareness of the masters and so on. So, but but still, it's a it's a part of the awareness training. Question from Pankaj. So this often comes up, I guess, that the payback period is that something you can easily calculate if you're putting a system like this on board when it pays back? Is I guess. I'll, I'll say, uh, you know, placing, um, uh, investing in hardware and uh, connect uh, auto locking equipment um, is not saving anything. It's, it's what you do and what you use it for. So you, you have to do your homework. You have to understand uh, across your organization, they have to understand the, the business and the bottom line and what, what really matters. And then uh, bring the most most important data back home, and use that, and use it all the time. And then, and it has have to be driven by somebody. If you just install it, uh, use the money for hardware, and get a lot of data in, and you don't have a plan for that, then then I, I'm I'm not sure it's going to be a success. So so the organization have to do their homework. Oh, very good. I can see three questions on sensors here. I don't know which of you is the uh, one who wants to answer <laughs> sensors related questions, but they're all Victoria is asking, how do you work with a ship that doesn't have connected equipment like old gauges? Anton Zakharov is asking, do you want mass flow meters on a boiler? And Michael Schmidt is asking, how do you manage with uh, speed logs that aren't very accurate? I don't know which of you, <laughs> you would like to. Yeah. <laughs> go that. Data integrity is probably the biggest challenge related to uh, digital vessel performance management, you know, and, and that applies both for noon reporting and uh, of course sensor data, the quality is, is different. If there, you know, you, uh, raw, the quality of raw manual re, manually, manually reported data is in general very poor, but you don't have to take extreme measures to, to validate it, okay? You can collect the log speed, the main engine RPM, and then you have a, a true, you know, fixed point, to a uh, reference point to validate uh, the noon reported information. And we understand uh, within GTT Group that digitalization of shipping is a, a long and gradual process. So uh, case by case, you know, we, we recommend different, uh, different approach to, uh, to performance manage management. You know, a new build, uh, of course, invest in, in quality sensors, but a 20-year-old ship, there's a lot you can do. You can connect one or two instruments, uh, validate your reported data, and at least uh, you're in a better position than before to evaluate the performance. Uh, so, and the other one was around uh, speed uh, inaccurate speed logs. Uh, we, of course, have methods to uh, calibrate the most essential uh, inputs or most essential measurements uh, on the shore side. Uh, but managing data quality is a big task for the owners, ship owners and those who are. And, and Karsten, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, well uh, Michael that. Smith, yes, you're right. Uh, lock, lock sensors is, um, is, is um, with, with great inaccuracy, I would say. And uh, that's also draft sensors, for example. Uh, in some cases, the um, torsion meter as well. Um, but you get an, an eye for that. And uh, that also means that we have a, a, a change in, in, in the accuracy or, or the quality of these sensors. So now we are changing the draft sensors, for example, to a, a much better um, supplier. But, but you're right, the speed uh, or the lock is, is definitely one of the sensors that creates most, uh, I would say, um, noise, so to say. Oh, and you have well, the, the boilers, is that a, just on and off meter with the monitoring the boiler is working or you'd have a flow meter on the boiler to make it work, is it? On, on, on some of the ships, we actually now have uh, four, uh, 11 ships equipped now. So, but, but some of the ships, um, it's basically because we are gas carriers, we, we and, and some of, of the ships are with scrubbers, but, but um, it's, it's a mass flow meter uh, on most of the ships on the boiler. Wow, okay. Well, there's three up votes for Martin Taylor's question at the top. So we're keeping with this charter thing, but it's so important because everybody's waiting for the charters to drive all this stuff. So Martin is asking if you've saved a customer hundreds of thousands of dollars on fuel, is he at least going to acknowledge it to you? Or, or is he just going to accept yeah, that's, the service? That, that's, that's a part of the discussion that we're having. How, right. how to share the benefit, right? I mean, uh, we, we, in, a, in a way, we don't, we don't like to give, the, give it away. But it makes us more competitive, I'll say. But but definitely, these discussions is is so important, and uh, 
it might not be the guy you need to talk to it might not be the guy who settled the the, the business so to say um, so so you have to create an awareness that you can get these kind of transparency on, on your CO2 emission on fuel consumption and all that uh, the EEOI for example if they want to use that as a KPI um, in order to you, in a way, you have to get behind the brokers and, and in, in, into the customers. And it's, it's not an easy task, at least not in our business, uh, but it's something that we have to highlight. And uh, that is something we most likely are going to do automatically. So when they have our ships, they will see these uh, figures uh, independently if they ask for them or, or not. And, and the then try to create a more awareness among that. No, the customers pay for the fuel with most of your contracts, do they? Uh, yes, yeah, yes, they do. <laughs> well, you get some more appreciation then. <laughs> okay, so the next question is uh, for Harold and Serena. Do you consider operational conditions like wind and waves in your performance model? Yes, absolutely, and uh, that is essential. Uh, you know, you, the impact uh, of uh, environmental conditions on uh, on consumption and uh, power and speed is great, and it's impossible to analyze the performance without considering that in detail. Yes. Oh, okay. So the absolutely. next question is for for Serena, asking specifically about fuel monitoring on offshore support vessels. Um, do you think there should be a tamper-proof flow meter? But We've had tamper-proof flow meters and still have stories about problems <laughs> with <that laughs> fuel. So I guess data is much better than a tamper-proof flow meter. Well, I guess so, so, uh, th this is a, a, a running problem in the OSV markets. So when we talk about tamper-proof, it's not just about the meter itself. It's about the whole system integrity to check every single pipeline, whether fuel flow, to ensure that there's no leakage, there's no other outlets where they can pump it in and out from. And usually when they get this system, they will also couple it with our bunker monitoring system as well. So we know how much actually goes into the vessel and how much is used. So there's a lot of cross checks going on. And yes, there's a lot of different stories that you can hear about people trying to tamper of the meter. So it's about active monitoring to see if there's any big discrepancy that you would otherwise detect so that you can alert um, the operators on time. So if they're pumping fuel in and then pumping fuel out again, you can you can spot that in some other metric, is it? Yeah, so, so it's about cross-checking to make it tally so that you don't have missing a few hundred tons of fuel suddenly. Oh, well, very good. So I think the next question is we already covered, unless anybody's got any more to add. So Kevin, Captain Shukla is asking, does it use a digital twin method? I don't know. There's no actual definition of a digital twin, but it, he, oh, he's saying, well, come from a company, we make a duplicate of the engine. Which I don't know, that's, you're not making a duplicate I mean, of the engine, are you? I don't think. No, but I mean, it's worth mentioning that um, many of those buzzwords like digital twins are used quite freely and openly mm, yeah. uh, in respect to, with respect to digitalization. And what is a digital twin? Is it a virtual re reality environment or is it a performance model? You know, that has to be defined. Yeah, you're not making engine models, though. I think it's like Captain Ravi Shukla sounds like he is from his own company. But yeah. Mm -hmm. do, do you want any, um, maybe Harold and Serena, you have any um, perspectives on cargo owners? Nick Lambert's also asking about how cargo owners are using their data. I think we've probably pushed Carsten quite far on <laughs> talking about the customers, but uh, do you have any? Yeah, and recently we have initiated projects uh, between owners. Uh, and a joint projects with owners and cargo uh, cargo uh, charters, uh, so working together on uh, full transparency and to improve the operations. Uh, so, so those projects are very very interesting and promising because for to to really improve, uh, those stakeholders have to work together, and there has to be transparency. And like Carsten here uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, the benefit sharing is, of course, uh, an issue that the industry has to solve, and it has to be appealing for for everyone to participate in the improvement. Wow, uh, that is what we are working on, together with some of our customers. It's got a technical question we got next. So, if we've got the maritime fuel management at the boiler or at the generation set owner, we simply argue that, as per the charter party, the vessel is allowed to burn so much quality. In that case, how charters how will the charters benefit? So I guess we're talking about the 
the mixture between the, uh, the how the contract is written and how so if you get savings that are I guess that's a, I guess it all comes down to the contractual relationship with the charter. I think that's what, what he's asking me about right. then. That if it's all set in legal terms, how much fuel the ship is going to use, then you don't get much space for doing any, any improvement, I suppose. But I guess that comes down to the whole question to try and get charters as, as engaged as possible, I suppose, isn't it? Which I, we've talked about quite a lot, haven't we? Yeah. Um, Dan Modaran is asking, what's the cost <laughs> for a ballpark figure? of installing this on a typical medium range tanker is i mean people don't often want to answer questions like this so if you'd rather not say then no we can say that you know uh, I, I guess all of the owners uh, out there know roughly the cost of of the sensors i mean a sensor package for a tanker or a bulker or container ship is between 30 and sixty thousand euros depending on the ex extent of the installation but if a sensor is in place uh the locking system uh is a lot less than the sensor package it's 10, 15, 20, 25, depending on the scope of the installation. A bit higher if you have applications on top, but yeah. Oh, um, Captain Ravi Shukler is asking, so if, if, you, if you're a charterer and you're thinking of uh, taking on a ship, how do you know if they've got a system like this, if the brokers aren't going to tell you? Is, I suppose it's more uh, evolution we need to see in the market with more... Uh, I mean, brokers still see, see, I don't know how much information brokers are passing on to their customers apart from the capacity and the age. Well, well, maybe uh, the, the, the brokers, they, they're definitely not stupid. They, they know that this um, um, climate environment and also the cost side is something that is going to be um, you know, more and more requested. So um, uh, the case is to cre create, you know, the awareness among the brokers and make them understanding that the transparency and the, the benefit uh, from monitoring your, your fuel consumption is something that the broker's customer, the cargo owner can use. And, and in order to establish that kind of a dialogue is, um, is something we, we, we all have to work on. Oh, because it has, it, have, it have to go hand in hand. We were planning to finish on the hour, but uh, there's one question from Ziping Cheng uh, structural health management. Um, Serena Geraldo, do you want to answer that? And while you're at it, answer Anton Zakharov's question about your, is there a subscription fee <laughs> that just came in? Yeah, uh, no, we haven't been involved in any any uh, projects related to structural health of the vessels yet, but uh, we are more than uh, willing to explore that field. There are opportunities out there, as uh, there are basically no limits to uh, what can be uh, analyzed and improved and uh, done with uh, logging systems like Marokka. Wow. And one last question system. from, can this integrate into other people's existing systems quite easily, do you think? Absolutely, and we have an open API, so uh, the data we collect can be uh, fed to any third party system quite easily. Oh, yes. well, and it's done uh, to a great extent. Wow, oh, that's fantastic. There we go. Oh, one more question for LED. I guess we've got a, what, one minute left. So uh, LFS, I'm not sure what LFS is, bunker and monitoring, but... Uh, it's the you know what? LNG fuel ships. Yeah, yes. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. LNG fuel <laughs> ship, bungee monitoring. Is it, is it something you've, uh, you've, you've started to do? Or is it? Uh, yes, we do have um, our systems on board the first LNG fuel ships, uh, and it, it's a long story. So do, do definitely contact us and we can discuss further on that. Oh, oh, that's great. Okay, well, that's lovely. Well, well, um, I think that's been a fantastic discussion. I think we're all seeing the uh, massive breadth that's going on here. I think it's a theme of trying to get charters to get more and more engaged, but they are getting very engaged, and we'd like to see more of it. And uh, I think I think it's been fascinating the the richness of stuff we we can do here. So I'll pass back to Vida for the closing words. I think. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. So we learned how vessel performance management is at the heart of emissions reduction and sustainable shipping, I think. Thanks, Harold Dur, Serena, Karsten, um, for speaking and sharing your stories. Also, Maror Kass as part of GTT Group for sponsoring this webinar. Uh, for those who don't know, Digital Ship and VPO has a YouTube channel where you can find all our webinars and learn from industry thought leaders. So this webinar will be 
available very soon to you on YouTube. Uh, please join us this Thursday at uh, 10 a.m. for the very last webinar of this year with uh, Kianel and Agreco on vessel performance optimization. And now Digital Ship is signing off until Thursday morning. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.